My wife and my 10-month-old son died in an accident four days ago. I was at work when the authorities got a hold of me. I remember saying, oh, that's terrible, into the phone before hanging up on them. It's strange how people sometimes react to such situations. For reasons I don't really understand, I continued working. I recall little of that time. I'm not really sure what I did, but around 15 minutes passed before a coworker stopped me and said that I had been crying. The past four days were hazy like that. It's all been a blur. Phone calls with insurance agents. Funeral arrangements. The ceremony itself. People acted very strange around me, almost as though they were afraid. They wouldn't even look me in the eyes, and were all so eager to get away from the conversation. In fact, pretty much the only thing people really said to me was, I'm sorry, and is there anything I can do for you? But I don't blame them. After all, there is no standard protocol on how to behave in such situations. I spent the first three nights at my mother's house, sleeping in my childhood bedroom. My sister also flew into town as well, and has been staying with us. They've both been very supportive, but I decided yesterday that it was time for me to return home. It would be my first night there since the accident. Things went... strangely. I remember getting into my bedroom last night. I remember staring at the bed, realizing how lonely it looked. I'd been so busy it hadn't fully sunken in yet. And I was afraid. I was afraid that lying in that bed, all by myself, is when it would hit me. But I hadn't slept at all in days. I was exhausted, both mentally and physically. But as soon as I laid in the bed, I fell asleep in mere moments. I awoke in the night to the sound of crying. It was completely pitch dark. Stay here, I got it. I said aloud. I felt my way down the short hallway. The crying had stopped, which was a good sign, but I thought I'd check on him anyways. I slowly and oh so quietly opened the door. Silence. There was a tiny amount of moonlight shining through the window. I approached his crib, smiling. But he wasn't there. And reality came crashing back. The crying I heard must have been the tail end of a dream. My son wasn't in his crib. My wife wasn't waiting for me back in our bed. They were dead. And they will never come back. I will never see them again. Nobody had been in my son's room since the accident. I picked up his blanket and held it to my face. It smelled just like him. Almost as though he was there. I could feel myself starting to lose control. I thought of my wife and my son the last time I saw them. I had kissed them both goodbye and left for work. They both had such big smiles on their faces. It was too much. The enormity of the whole situation had finally sunk in. I began hyperventilating, gasping for breath. I felt nauseous. Before I knew it, I had wrapped my son's blanket around a small pillow and I sat on the ground, cradling it in my lap. It was almost him, the smell, the size. I thought I could will him back into my arms. I thought back to my father's death three years ago. I was horribly sad at the time, but I had always known that I would heal, that I'd eventually move on. But this... This was so very different. I could tell with a certainty that what happened to my wife and my son was going to break me, beyond repair. I was damaged. You don't just move on from something like this. Instead, it consumes you. I continued gasping, crying. And then, somewhere in that misery, my emotions started to change. I felt betrayed at who or what I do not know. At everything, I guess. I was furious. I threw the blanket and the pillow against the wall. I approached my son's dresser and swept every item to the ground. I pushed his crib over. I punched the wall as hard as I could, leaving a pretty large hole. 
I let out a billowing scream of anger, misery, and frustration. And then I fell to the ground, crying once more, finally letting it all out. After a few minutes, I started to compose myself. I looked around at the mess I had created in the room. I analyzed the hole I made in the wall, and I shook my head. That was so stupid. I'd have to learn to control myself better. I needed to. But that's when I noticed something strange in that hole. The corner of a brown case. It took a bit of work, but I was eventually able to pull it out from in between the walls. It was approximately 8 by 12 inches, around 4 inches thick. There was a strange language written on the top. I sat it on the dresser and decided to open it. And that's when sadness and anger turned into fear. The first thing I took out was a note written on yellow paper. It was addressed to my name and was written in my handwriting, which was immediately peculiar. I did not write that note or put that case there. How would I even do that? I would have had to tear the wall down, put in the box, repair the wall, and repaint. No. This box was placed there, somehow, when the house was first being built, years before we even bought it. This had to be some sort of paradox or something. There was no other logical explanation. And then I read the note. It said, They're with me now. I'm sorry. I know they're rightfully yours, but I couldn't live without them. I did what I had to do. I'm sorry. I just wanted you to know they're okay. Again, I'm sorry. I'm just so sorry. Underneath the note was a picture. It was myself, my wife, and my son all together, smiling. We looked so happy. But here's the strangest thing. It had to have been taken at least two years in the future. My son was a toddler, more than double in size. The man in the picture was definitely me, but also not me. It was another version of me, at another time and place. Another strange thing about the picture was that all three of us were wearing heart-shaped pendants, they all looked to be the same. I had never seen them before. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I've made any sense of this. I do have theories. I have ideas. But I'm probably just about as lost as anybody listening to this. I do know this. My wife and son are no longer with me. But they aren't gone either. They exist. Somewhere, somehow. And they seem happy. And maybe that's enough. I stood my son's crib back up. I took the items from the floor and placed them back on top of his dresser. I neatly laid the blanket and pillow back in his crib. And then I went back to the bedroom. There, sitting neatly on my pillow, was a heart-shaped pendant. I have no idea how it got there. I picked it up and I put it on around my neck. What could it hurt, I thought as I lay down on the bed. And I waited, thinking about my chance to get my wife and son back. After all, the other me found a way. I will too. I will find a way to get my family back. <laughs>